In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. So we went Christmas tree shopping as we do, and we, uh, we found a tree. We were somewhat divided. Uh, my wife loved it. It was the fattest tree I'd ever seen. It wasn't that classical shape. It was more like a lollipop. Um, but for some reason, she had her heart set on it. And so we cut it down, and we took it in. And as soon as we, um, we got it set up, all of a sudden, the needles were starting to, to fall to the ground. And, um, and now as we get uh, within 24 hours, we're hoping it makes it another 24 hours. This won't make it the 12 days of Christmas. That's not going to happen. But we're hoping it makes it another maybe 16 more hours so that we can have tomorrow morning around the tree. Uh, but it's starting to look more like uh, the lights and the ornaments are holding it together. And if you walk by it, you can hear this little, it's kind of a pleasant sound of the needle sliding through. Um, and every now and then an ornament will hit the ground. And, uh, so maybe you can guess what Christmas special this has me thinking about. The Charlie Brown Christmas special. That, uh, raise your hand if you've seen the Charlie Brown Christmas special. Okay, great. For the two of you who haven't, you're saving this sermon because I'm going to tell you all about it. So, and I feel like this happened to so many people this year because Thanksgiving... Uh, uh, pushed right into First Advent, all of a sudden we were right there staring Christmas down, uh, and, but it didn't feel like we were ready for Christmas. It, uh, for some reason, it didn't feel like it was uh, lifting our spirits and filling our, uh, our insides with that joy. Um, and it felt a lot like Charlie Brown felt. So Charlie Brown was having a tough, uh, we call it Advent, he had a tough season getting ready for Christmas. Um, he just couldn't get that joy in his heart. And so he's talking to his friend Lucy about it. Uh, and Lucy uh, suggests that he might get a little more Christmas spirit if he led the community Christmas pageant, which was a great idea. And then she complained that uh, her Christmas stress was around the fact that she always got toys instead of real estate, which is what she really wanted. <laughs> and so as Charlie Brown's trying to get into the spirit of Christmas, he's walking back. Um, he runs into Sally, whose uh, who's, uh, big uh, issue is that she's putting together a her, her list to Santa. And she has all of these things. It's about on page two of her list. Um, and then her last piece is, uh, uh, you know what? I'd be really happy with just a, a handful of tens and twenties, if that's OK. And so, uh, so you can see how Charlie Brown is starting to feel like, uh, like Christmas just isn't quite falling into place, or that other people aren't getting it, or they're not helping him get into the spirit of it. So he decides that he's going to lead this Christmas pageant. And, uh, uh, and he gets there, and he starts uh, uh, to do his job, and he realizes they have a lot of different plans for his Christmas pageant. Uh, they want to add a dance number, or some jazzier music. Now there's a Christmas queen uh, that's made its way into the pageant. Uh, and he's just not getting into the spirit. So he decides, well, maybe if we decorate um, the stage a little bit, maybe if we make the set look more festive, that'll help me get into the spirit. And so he goes to get a tree. And I think he uh, takes Linus uh, and Lucy with him, and he goes and he finds this tree. It's not quite the enormous lollipop tree uh, that we found. Uh, What's the tree look like? It's really, really small. It, it barely is, is, is held up. It doesn't have all that much uh, uh, needles on it at all, does it? And so he's got this uh, you know, kind of a pathetic looking tree. But you know what I think the tree is? I think the tree is exactly how he's feeling. I think the tree is how he feels right now about Christmas and kind of a little bit how he feels about himself. Um, uh, he's just not feeling uh, great about himself or about Christmas, but this tree, and he thought, if I can decorate this tree, if I can make this tree feel like Christmas, then maybe I can make my heart feel like Christmas. Um, I think that was probably what was going on in his head. And so uh, his friends try to talk him out of it and tell him there is no way you are going to make this tree look grand. Um, but he wants this tree, and so he takes the tree, and he goes, and he sets it up, and he puts a few decorations on it. And what do you think all of the rest of the cast think about this little tree? Do you think they're impressed? No, they're not impressed at all. In fact, they're making even more fun of him. And he has had it. 
And he said, can anybody, can anybody tell me what Christmas is all about? Does anybody remember what happens then? So, so Linus, I mean, what does Linus do? With his, with his blankie in hand, he walks to the middle of the stage. And what story does he tell? story from Luke. He tells the story about uh, Mary and Joseph uh, going and having a baby and wrapping him in a cloth and angels appearing to the shepherds and telling them all about it. And the shepherds getting so excited, they run to the, to the manger and they're all there. And as Linus tells this story about the very first Christmas, about the real heart of Christmas, all of a sudden, uh, they're a little more encouraging of Charlie Brown. And they say, you know what? This tree's not that bad. And so they go and they start taking de decorations off Snoopy's house. Uh, that's kind of gaudy with decorations. And they start adding. And as they do, the tree looks like it's getting taller and fuller. And it looks like it really is a grand Christmas tree that points toward the spirit and heart of And then they all break into song and sing, Hark the herald angels sing. So what I want you to remember about the story, what I think is so meaningful about the story, is the way that God comes into the story and takes the messiness of, of Charlie Brown's life, the messiness of a manger with all the farm animals there, comes into life exactly as we live it, which is kind of messy sometimes. Sometimes we don't get along with our friends. Sometimes our, our, our parents are telling us to do things. Um, and, just aren't all that into the spirit that God comes into those moments and makes them special and makes them beautiful because the God that was born into our lives, into the messiness of our lives, also redeems and changes all of our lives. So we have a choice to make. We can be like they were before Linus told the story, or we can be like they were after choose to be Christmas people with the knowledge that God came into our lives and made everything beautiful, filled our lives uh, with joy and beauty and Christmas uh, day after day, or once we finish opening the presents, we can go back to uh, uh, picking on our siblings and all the other things. But I would suggest, I would suggest that we let this spirit last that we let that beauty and that joy of knowing that God came into our lives to make it beautiful, that we let it last, and we let it fill our hearts like it filled Charlie Brown and his friends' hearts. Amen.